um, and when you think about the grind, what are maybe some some moments, highs and lows that stick out in your mind from, from this year that um, made it a grind, I guess? Well, honestly, I'm going to be honest, like the whole year was a high in terms of it was my rookie season. I got to learn a ton from it and being able to learn is probably one of my biggest like motivators in life in general. Like I, I really want to learn and become the best I can be. So having a off year or maybe a year with lots of highs and lows, as you put it, is really a high for me in the end because I got to experience this and now I get to move forward with the knowledge that I already have. So but as a team, like obviously we didn't get all the results that we wanted. I mean, any team wants to go out and win every single game. I mean, we've made it to this level for a reason. I think all of our competitive spirits is there at an all-time high just because we do, like this is what we do for a passion and we love this sport and we want to perform and compete our best always. So that I think is... Um, all for me from that, for that. And then now that your rookie year is over, um, I guess looking forward, how, what are some things um, that you would like to work on and how do you, how do you kind of see yourself progressing from this point now that that first chapter is kind of out of the way? Totally. Um, I mean, this year was not at all like what I wanted it to be. Um, but going into this next year, I have nothing but, hey, I'm starting at the bottom and at least I can't go any deeper or lower than this. Um, all I can do is go up from here and continue to learn, grow, develop, and my pursuit honestly is just developing um, to the best that I can be. Like that's my goal in life is just become the best I can be, best player, best, best uh, human, best person, sister, daughter, teammate, all of that. So um, moving into this next season, I just want to keep progressing. Um, that's all I really have. Brecken, you just kind of expressed a lot of what I think are humility-type comments, but I want to give you a chance to flex. I'm of the opinion with Jimmy that you have the potential to be one of the elite players in this league. You have the skill set. You definitely show it on the pitch. Outside of this little bubble that is here in Utah, are you getting much of that? Are you feeling like this is your place to be in the NWSL? Are you hearing it from the league? Is there Are there outside voices that are reaching out to you and saying, Brecken, like, you go like you've got everything that you need um to be honest like I, I have my parents and I think I have Jimmy those are the only people I feel like I really have had on my side like obviously you have other people supporting you in that but they've they're the ones I've really felt the love of being like okay like you can really like you you can be you you can become Bracken Mozingo who she needs to be in this league and that means a lot to me like all you need is one and that one person could be yourself but I feel like I'm my biggest critic as well so having a few others outside of me telling me like hey let's go like let's use this next year to build continue to progress continue to to grind you know um it, it means a lot to me and it helps you know fight the inner voices in your own head thinking okay like can I actually do this do I belong here shoot I didn't do anything this season like can I actually do this and so having these type of people in my life is really big and it, it helps me um, discourage whatever's going on with me personally and go okay let's freaking go like especially this next season being able to start fresh and be like okay this is completely new is huge for me and I'm super excited. Well maybe I can be a voice uh, for many who maybe you haven't heard from we run a fan-sided podcast and I can tell you the fans absolutely adore you and look forward to what you're going to bring in subsequent years but um, I am curious, and if you're not willing to talk about this, I'm perfectly okay with you saying bump or pass, but can you help us understand what was going on with the shins kind of in those hot summer months where you were in the boot and we didn't get to see you? And is that something that's maybe going to be chronic, or is that something that the doctors have kind of pointed out that they've alleviated or can be through training? And just more on that, please. Um, to be honest, I, I don't really know 100% what goes on in my body. I mean, everyone's body is different, and sometimes we don't have the answers in terms of why certain things happen at certain times. Um, but with this, like, I, I don't believe it's chronic. We've kind of come to the conclusion that it's a manage of workload, a manage of also making sure you take your vitamins and taking care of what you can control and just making sure that the medical side and medical um, staff is on the same side as me with my efforts in terms of am I putting in the right nutrients I need to make sure my body's 
fulfilling the workload that I'm required to take at that time. So I think with those combination of things, it's um, just taking that head on and people realizing and recognizing their parts and what they have control over and going from there. So one last maybe one for me then, uh, where this is largely, and maybe not largely is not the right word, but where you're going to be responsible for a lot of your training in the off season. What are your plans? Are you going to stay local? I assume so. And do you have a place where you feel feel comfortable and safe going to for training and that they'll have you ready for 2025? What What's kind of your outlook for that? Yeah, um, thankfully, like I live right here in Harriman and I'm gonna, I live right down the street from this place and our performance coach is going to be here all off season. So I plan on training with her in the off season. Her already seeing like what I've done this season has been huge. So her being able to stay and take care of me and like look after me based off the numbers that we already have in a form that she wants to evaluate and like go forward from there is huge. Um, and then I also like have these beautiful fields to do some kick around and like work on stuff with me. And then I also have a trainer that I've been going to for the past four years, um, total athlete training, Christian Sandoval. He's, he's my OG, he's my number one. Um, I've been going to him for the past four years, so he's been awesome for me. So he, he's also like six minutes away. So I lied. Cool. You made me think of one more question because you're great to give call out shout outs. Your fits throughout the season just got better and better as the season went on. And you're always good on social media to say who kind of outfitted you. Mm -hmm. What can we expect in 2025 from the closet of Breck and Mazingo? I'm honestly not sure. I mean, it's, it's coming. I try to reach out to brands to see if they want to collab. And if they don't, then I just do my own thing. And um, fashion has always been an interest of mine. And so being able to use that as a platform to maybe give me other outside opportunities has been huge. And I hope for that in my pursuit of showing up with these fits to maybe give myself another another door to go through outside of the pitch or outside of soccer. Thank you. And I see, I think I saw a lot of uh, thrifted shout outs on some of those fits. Yeah. The, a the, decent the, amount of thrifting. Yeah, a couple, a couple fits were from thrift hood. Yeah. They were awesome. Okay. So definitely you don't know what to expect because you just kind of got to go thrift and, mm -hmm. and see what's out there. Yeah. But I, I liked a lot of what you were talking about there because it, it seemed like when you were referring to sort of managing your injury and focusing on nutrition, taking your vitamins, uh, that kind of stuff, like all of that stuff sounds like you're becoming more professional or you are learning how to be more professional, For sure. I guess, kind of the, the off the pitch, I guess, stuff. Do you yeah. feel like you became more of a pro this year in your rookie year? Totally. I mean, this rookie year has been everything I've kind of expected. Um, and it being my first year, anything that was unexpected, I was like, okay, well, this is probably how it is because I've never had a year to base it off of. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the season's been great. The season's been great. But. Sure. And, and where do you feel like kind of this club is organizationally, competitively, schematically, I guess, as you move from 2024 to 2025? So you're – I mean, does it feel like you're maybe not learning on the fly quite as much? Like you can maybe jump into an actual off season, a full preseason, you know, a full staff in your preseason coming oh, in. Oh, for sure. That kind of thing. That's gonna be huge. I think going into this next year, I think it'll set us up with just structure and with um, confidence and knowing, okay, like this is how it is from day one, instead of kind of trying to uh, switch on the fly. Which even if you go into a game, like having to switch on the fly, kind of stinks, and there's sometimes miscommunication and. Um, there's certain like little breakdowns and I think that like what could happen in a game scenario kind of happens potentially off the field I guess like in the team atmosphere team setting which is fine um, it's going to happen for probably every team especially an expansion team something has to change things have to change to become better all that but I think going into this next year we're all pretty excited and I mean you're always wanting to take a step higher than you were before and I think, shoot, we all eyes on the playoffs next year. Like, that's where our number one goal is to be. And hopefully, yeah, getting just number one goal is getting the playoffs, and then we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, that's all you have time. Um,